Okay, we are live. This yep. is Welcome to uh, Intimate ZVX with Stoic, part 5, game number 1. This is uh, Stoic Nouveau here. And I'm Stoic Regret. So this game is uh, ZVZ on Metalopolis um, versus Root Destiny, mm -hmm. um, which is actually Quantic Destiny now, but he plays yeah, on his Root account in North America all the time. Yep. Okay. So let's get this to scene two. Let's go ahead. Okay, 20 seconds. Okay, three, two, one, play. All right, 20 seconds. Okay, so ZVZ on this map, first thing that I always like to do is you want to get your overlord as quick to his, uh, as fast as possible into his base so you can scout. Uh, obviously, this game he is going to be close to air spawn, but... One thing to note is make sure that you only go halfway uh, across the dis the air spawn distance between this base and yours, so that you can uh, predict that he's not there if you don't see his overlord, and you can go straight to the other position. But fortunately for me, he is in this position, this game. Now, normally in these positions, I do 50 ha 15 hatch, but I've been uh, I've been experimenting with doing a uh, little bit more of a mind game kind of a thing at the beginning of the game in ZVZ to try to gain a little bit of an advantage. Uh, it's just There's just so many things you can do in, ZV, in ZVZ to gain advantages early game. Uh, because the windows that you need, they, they, they can be extremely minimal, like a matter of 10 seconds, having banelings 10 seconds before somebody can uh, end the game, one baneling hit can end the game. Having too many zerglings before his pop out by like 10 seconds, you can kill two queens or half his drones. So. So most of the time you should 15 hatch because when your overlord is in the other person's base you can see what he's doing. So it's very safe to 15 hatch. But this game I'm going to open 14-14. And so basically I'm just going to try to pick a build order at the beginning of the game that's going to gain me a little bit of an advantage. So the first thing he does here, not a mistake, it's just his choice to build, is to go pool first. And then I saw the, Zerg, uh, the drone go out. So I know that he's going to be building a hatch. There, there's the drone. I see it, so I assume that he's going to build a hatch. And he's not doing uh, a gas build. I still don't see any gas. So his gas is going to be way later than mine. So now I've decided what kind of a build I'm going to do. So it's going to look a little bit like, like a little. Uh, it's going to look like a cheese, but it just takes advantage of the fact that he's going to be on slow zerglings, and the only way he can defend me is spine crawlers. And because these distances are so small, I should be able to do some kind of damage. So the first thing I do is I get Zerglings, and normally here it's more practical to get speed, but like I said, because I know he doesn't have gas, I'm going to use the advantage of building you know, my first two or three Banelings so quick that uh, if, he, if he basically doesn't fight with his Queens or his Spine Crawlers, it's impossible for him to actually engage me. Uh, especially because I am getting speed too, and it will finish before his speed even. So the cool thing about this is... Uh, I know that if he builds a spine crawler, it will have to be at the top of the ramp. I actually see it in this game. I assume and that, I know that overlord that, was an accident, though. That's not yeah, that, that overlord was a total accident. Never, ever lose overlords like that. But and, and the second defense is the queens. And the queens, because of the creep spread, is going to be so slow. It will take such a long time to get to the bottom of the ramp. So I actually have full control of the bottom of the ramp when someone opens like this and I take advantage of it. So here you see I build three banelings. I don't overdo it. And these three banelings basically give me complete dominance at the, at the bottom of the map. If he tries to lift the spine crawler and move down, I can just attack it with my zerglings. If he brings just zerglings, which is the only unit fast enough to actually make it down at this point, then he has to deal with three banelings, which this early in the game is so, so powerful. And if he slowly walks his queen down, which he should be doing, uh, I'm assuming he would be doing that, by the time he gets there, he's going to lose his hatch. So as you can see, the hatch is already down to half HP, and he makes the right decision not to try to engage me. There's absolutely nothing he can do. So the game is not over, but like I said, this just kind of shows, you know, there's a lot of funky things you can do in ZVZ to kind of take advantage of the different openings. Uh, you just have to kind of... It's kind of like flipping a coin, and if you get it right, you get the advantage. So this just puts you at even with him, basically. Yeah, just of I, I would wars. say this is even, because he, he definitely has more drones. Um... Even though he lost his hatch. Yeah. Like you're ahead, you're ahead in tech, though, yeah. so... I am ahead in tech. So that's that's one good thing. The, my expansion is going to be earlier than his. Uh, I have less queens. I have less larvae, probably. And um, 
I'm going to have less drones than him, but my expansion will be sooner, and I will have full map control. And these two queens, uh, the kills, they help as well, too. They see all right, these so at this point, I'm pretty much just joining up, and I'm going to do another scout here, and I see that he built four defensive banelings, and I also see two spine crawlers. So this is really good for me, because this basically, him building these banelings up here like this, and showing me that many spine crawlers with another queen, so he actually built three queens, because I already killed two, basically tells me that he can't really afford to kill me, like right now. It would be very odd if he was able to send like 40 lings at me right now, and have those four banelings, five banelings walking to my base right now. Because that would be extremely dangerous. I mean, I have no spine crawlers, I have one queen, I would basically have nothing to do but to build defensive banelings and zerglings at this point. But I know that because he built them at his base, and because he invested so much into spines and into queens, he doesn't even have speed, actually, I can see that here. So, and this is really good, he shows me that he wants to expand, so I know that I'm really safe. So at this, you know, during all of that, I did nothing but build drones, and I was able to safely put down my Roach Warren, so. Anyways, the, the cool thing about ZVZ is, it's pretty much all about uh, not droning too much, because he'll, his army value would be higher, but you still have to kind of tech forward, because... Eventually, uh, having more drones is not enough. Having tech like Roach Speed or Mutalisks or uh, when you go into Hydralisks or infest, uh, Infestors, etc. Those things really complement your army value. But uh, at the beginning of the game, it's all about droning. So how I like to look at it is the difference between ZVZ, for example, and PvP or TVT is when you're investing in Econ and when you're building tech structures, you actually lose Econ a little bit more than what the other races lose, because you actually lose the drone. So to simplify it, I look at it as, say two players were dead equal with each other, then they would be building drone for drone. So, you know, they'd go up to 40 drones, they'd both be at 40, then 41, 42, 43. But it's impossible in a ZVZ to be, you know, precisely on the dot, especially, you know, after the four minute mark, because who knows how many times the person presses D. There's no way of actually scaling that as it's being built. So you can look at it like this. Um, say I build 40 drones and he builds 45. Then with those five drones, you don't actually have to be ahead five drones. You only need to be ahead in drones. So of those five drones, you can use one of those drones to build a spine crawler, one of those drones to build a hatch, one of those drones to build an evil chamber. So you've teched, built defense, and expanded, and you're still ahead in drones. So that's, that's the real advantage of having more drones than the other player, not just the mineral part. So. Now this may be a basic question, but what, do you, what, can you, what are your gas timings and what determines that? Like, what do you need to support? Basically just drone count. Like, like I said, so I'm, yeah, basically I, I said all that to explain uh, for the reason you see I put down a spine crawler, I just put down an evil chamber, and before all that I put down the extractor. Basically how I decide what to put down as a tech structure or as defense or even an additional base is based on how many drones I have. So I kind of knew at that point because he was investing in spine crawlers and banelings and queens, etc., so much defense at the beginning of the game, I knew that during all that time all I did was you know, harass him with the speedlings I already created and was building drones behind that. So I knew I must have been ahead in drones somewhat. So I used that opportunity to say to myself, okay, maybe I'm ahead six, five drones at this point. I don't need to be ahead six or five drones, so I drop one spine because I feel greedy already at that point. I'm already ahead five drones, so why not make that four drones and I have a spine crawler. So even if he attacks me with five more roaches, I have enough time to pull drones or build more roaches to kind of fend it off. And then say I was ahead six drones, so I kind of felt like, okay, I can invest in this extra extractor. So that would be minus one plus minus three because I'd be taking them off, but the added gas will allow me to tech. And the same thing with the evil chamber. So the one mistake that I just noticed that I made, I'm not sure why I did this. In most case scenarios, when the game turns to this, I would, would have done this already. I already kind of assumed that I was ahead in drones. And we can kind of see I am 41 to 28 at this point. He just went up, actually. But still ahead yeah, in drones. we should do a quick time check. What do you got? Uh, 12.06. Okay, I'm going to pause. Count up to... 12, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I'm at 12.26. So oh. Talk, keep counting. Wait, I'll tell you. 24, 25, 26. Okay, we're synced. Uh, what I should have done almost two minutes ago, actually, is invest in another hatch. So my, my expansion should have already been going down. Because not only did I assume and guess probably that I was ahead, which is why I invested in the spine crawlers to kind of lessen my drone count, um, I already knew that my Roach Warren was before his. Because... 
when I scouted him, he was just making banelings, and I didn't make banelings during that time. So my roaches definitely would have been before his roaches. So if he did a roach attack against me, I would have had more roaches plus the spines, and I would have had more drones. So the thing I should have done before I even teched was put down that hatch. So now our hatches are going down at the same time, and see, I'm up 96 supply to 75, and I'm even ahead in tech because I'm able to put down my Hydralis den uh, before his because I'm up 20 roaches to his 11 roaches. But it's actually, this is actually a bad mistake because it's unnecessary. So, like, if you click on the unit tab now, this is how you kind of fix your mistakes in ZVZ. You see that I'm, we're at 48, 48 drones. So we tied for drones now, and our expansion is going to be done at the same time, even though I was ahead 40 drones to his 27 at one point. And now you can see it didn't make sense for me to make this rotation of roaches because... I was ahead in, in uh, drones, I don't have to be ahead in, in roaches, I'm already ahead in econ. I could have invested those drones into more tech and an expansion, and this lead that I just had that was at 22 roaches to his 10, I could have had 10 roaches. That could have been 10 less roaches, and I still would have won the game even easier because I had the expansion down you know, 3 minutes faster than what it, what it actually was. So now you can see the mistake of that in ZVZ, it spirals out of control into his favor so quickly. Like now, I only have 22 roaches and he has 25. So I am still ahead because I have Hydralisks, but you can see how I made the wrong decision and because of that the game is going to go on for however so much longer. So definitely keep that in mind when you, th when you think or when you know you're ahead in drones, you should always try to expand further. So you need to have a firm grasp on when you're ahead in drones, basically. Yeah, I definitely you're scouting or whatever I reason. Was, I just did not invest in that hatch and that was a really bad decision. But anyway, so the game plan plans out, and uh, he has his roach speed a little bit before mine, so he's able to kind of maneuver around a little bit better, especially because Hydralisks are extremely slow on creep. Um, but at this point, I know that there's no way he can actually kill me. I mean, if he invested in Infestor Tech at this point and attacked me, uh, my, Hydralisk, uh, my Hydralisk ball would have beaten Roach Hydra, and then he would have been out of fungos. Hydralisks are really good defensively like this. So at this point, I just basically have to drone. And so the advantage that I have here, it's kind of taken away because, like I said, for the last six, seven minutes of the game, I, I didn't play it out properly. I didn't have that ex extra expansion. And I built a ton more roaches than he did, and I didn't use them. I basically sat there with uh, nine more roaches than him with more drones and didn't do anything with them. So uh, as is, he cut up. So at this point, I'm just trying to drone. Taking my gases at my third as quick as possible. Gas is very important when you're going hydralisks and eventually infestors. Yeah, you always want to take those gases right away in ZVZ, right? Yep, as fast as you can, especially when you take a third. You should Z go down in. ZVZ is basically a gas dump. Whoever can spend the most usually has a better. Yep. Unless you're massing roaches. Yeah. <laughs> then you only need about four. Or what about du double Evo as well? Double Evo? Nah, you probably need four then. Especially when you go into tier two. They're so expensive 150 gas and 225 gas. Or six, you mean six gases. Yep. Alright, so this is a bit of a silly attack by him. I think he was trying to throw me off guard, but he shouldn't be attacking here. Hydralisks do way too much damage, it's really not worth it. Alright, so at this point in the game, I know that he probably is going to uh, skip Hydratech because if because I don't see Infestus already, and if you are to skip a tech this late, especially when I already have Hydras, it wouldn't make sense to go Hydras. I mean, if I attacked him right now and he just started making Hydras, I probably would win the game. And not because uh, his Hydra count would be less, but it's because another way to look at ZVZ is it's all about waves. So say his wave of Hydras is right now, because I know we're both going to be above max. So when we attack, my next wave is going to be able to be roaches and nothing but roaches. While his next wave is going to have to be roaches as well, but he's going to have way less gas than I had because he just invested in the hydras. So that's how you can kind of know if you can win or not. So if I see hydras here, I would have just kept rallying roaches over and over again. But as is, I'm just trying to make something happen at this point, trying to spread a bit just in case. That's why I always go in a line like this, just in case he has investors. And this is a bit of a mistake by him. He should not be attacking me, not in these positions. He's going to lose quite a bit. And this is really good for me because right at this point, I realize that regardless of what he has tech-wise behind this, that was a really bad fight for him, so I'm going to push a little and see what I can see because attacking is a way of scouting as well. And now I see his infestors. Now, the, the, the thing about that engagement that he just pulled, the reason why it was 
is going to be so devastating for him is because even though he's going to win this fight, uh, what I realize is those infestors that he just built uh, are basically his last line of gas because you can see roaches additionally popping out here. So forcing him to, to blow all of his inf uh, infestor energy right there basically just means my next wave is going to kill him because I have hydralisks and he does not and I was able to uh, invest in infestor tech after this. So as you can see, I have an additional 14 hydras coming after that and my next wave is going to be my 8 or 9 uh, infestor count and when I attack at that point, the infestors that he just built now, the four or five of them, are going to be completely useless. So he really has limited options at this point. He can either continue to build spine crawlers and infestors, in which case every infestor he builds is going to choke his roach supply, uh, making my infestors even stronger and my hydralisks even stronger. Or he's just going to have to keep building roaches, which will be directly countered by me having five or six or seven or eight or nine infestors on the next wave of attack. So this gold base is meaningless. You don't really need it. Yeah, I actually have already planned after that attack that my next wave is going to kill him. I just, because, you know, ZVZ is so gas heavy when you're doing this composition, I'm just using the minerals and spending them on expansions here. So I have it's no just intention. in case of a bad engagement, right? Like, well, even just because you have the extra minerals. Yeah, exactly. Like, I even see that he's taking the base up there, and it's completely pointless to me at this point. I'm just waiting for my infestors to pop, and then I'm going to build a little more roaches and go attack him when I'm maxed. So... It's just very difficult for him to hold this next incoming attack with the tech he has and the amount of useless investors that he has as a result of the last engagement. And he's got no hydras. Yeah, that's a big thing too. He can't have hydras now because you know his gas no. is positive. Well, if he has hydras, he would have such a low food count. It would be ridiculous. So he is making the right decision to stay on investors. I mean, uh, hydra roaches. But as you can see, this fight will spiral out of control really quickly as ZBZ does when you screw up your rotations. Um, especially when Infestor Energy is uh, in favor of one opponent, especially the one with Hydralisk. So this attack will look a little close after, but once the, in, once the uh, fungal growths kick in, it should be pretty easy at this point. So as you can see, this is, this is kind of my plan of doing all-in, which is why taking the third would have been irrelevant. Sorry, not taking the fourth base. So at this point, yeah, he has nothing but uh, infestors and roaches, so my infestors will be 100% efficient here. One thing to note, when someone plots down infested Terran, make sure you fungal the group of infested Terrans. Very few players actually spread their infested Terrans out, because it's more of a panic thing. People just kind of do it really quickly. But it makes a big difference, because if you plot down 50 infested Terrans and they get fungled once, they pretty much all just die. So that's one thing to make uh, note of. So yeah, at this point, you're going to see it's going to spiral way out. I'm going to shoot up to like 80 food in supply here. And he's going to be outnumbered drastically. So this additional base wasn't needed, which is why I wasn't taken earlier during the first attack. Because I kind of already had the mental state of, I'm, I'm going to all in here. So I guess I probably could have. I mean, proper management of minerals in a ZVZ when you're very gas heavy is is sometimes difficult because it's hard to estimate how much you're going to waste on gas on your next wave as opposed to how much you're going to waste on minerals. Because if I know I'm going to blow my minerals, if I have 900 minerals, I know how much I can afford with 900 minerals. But if I have like 1,700 minerals and 900 gas and I'm building infested roaches and hydras, it's really difficult to kind of tell how many minerals I'm going to have after that because I know that my gas is going to be depleted so much quicker. But yeah, so that's game. John? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. That was uh, that was good. Excellent. All right, so that was uh, that was part five, game one. Yep. Log off now and uh, start the next game.